What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Professor Layton in the Curious Village Blind. In the last episode, we were chased down by a ferris wheel, and uh, it was pretty intense. Um, however, it did lead us to finding a key that we can, I believe, use to make our way into the tower. So, yeah, it's quite the, uh, quite the advance in our story's progression. Also, let me move my microphone. Just briefly, so I can get the, the clearest of audio. Granted, you guys probably can't tell much of a difference. Um, we've technically started a new chapter, so I do want to check in and see if any of our friends have more puzzles for us along the way. Um, Crouton is still out of puzzles. Flick presumably will not have any more puzzles for us as well. However, I do, just for the sake of being comprehensive, want to make sure that uh, we don't you know miss out on that opportunity. We have solved 104 puzzles. Which is kind of crazy. Um, that's that's a lot of puzzles. <laughs> a lot of puzzles, and I'm thinking there are probably only like 120 or 130 puzzles in the game, honestly. But we'll keep walking around. Do not be alarmed by my piercing gaze. Okay. Do you have anything more for us? I'm sure as we progress through the tower, um, there will be stuff that's hidden that we'll need to go to. Um, or that we'll need to find hidden puzzles, you know, in all the nooks and crannies. Uh... Wow, Rodney's uh, like, hey, just so you know, I've been working really hard. Make sure you pass that along to Lady Dahlia. Speaking of which, let's head over this way before we head back to the inn, which I believe is where we need to go next. Um, but yeah, I I'd imagine there will be a few, I guess, like, barriers we need to make our way through. Um as we're progressing the tower, and I'm sure there will be a few hidden along the way. So I don't think we'll actually find a whole lot more from, you know, from our friends here. But we might as well ask around to be sure. They do these requests are always such a handful to take on, aren't they? I guess they are. Um, so we'll head in this way, see what's going on in the mansion. Anything from Matthew, see how Inspector Chelmy and the other friends are doing. Needn't worry, okay. He's doing his thing. Lady Dolly's gonna tell us she needs some time alone, presumably. Yep, and then Gordon's gonna be asking us if we've seen any uh, <clears throat> local hot singles that are interested in him. <laughs> but no, it doesn't seem so. Alright, then I guess we'll head to the inn. I don't want to be missing any puzzles, but I think I think we're doing what we can to cover our bases. Alright, then we'll head back this way, and then we can head into the inn and chat with Beatrice. Because Leighton believes he's got some clues as to who we're dealing with here. Hello, Professor. Is something the matter? You look a little shaken. Beatrice, I have an urgent request. Could you show me the newspapers from the last couple of days? The newspapers? <laughs> Certainly. Hang on for just a moment while I go fetch them for you. Interesting. That's strange. I'm sure I set them down around here somewhere. Is there a problem? I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I can't seem to find them anywhere. Interesting. Would they be incriminating? Even today's morning paper seems to have gone missing. Hmm. I see. Well, thank you just the same, Beatrice. This has been most helpful. Just what was in those papers anyway, Professor? Yoo-hoo, <laughs> Professor Layton. Raymond, and to what do we owe this visit? Oh, he told me I needed to find you and bring you to Reinhold Manor. Chelmy, that is? The inspector, I mean. Ooh, -hoo. he and Lady Dahlia await your arrival at Reinhold Manor. Thank you for the message. We will set out for the manor in just a few moments. Huh. That's, uh, certainly interesting. I don't really know what to make of the newspapers over the past couple of days. Would they show any... what recent events would be... I don't know relevant to figuring out who is coming after us. I honestly don't really know. Oh! You found the key to the tower, haven't you? How do you know about the key? You mustn't interfere with the tower. Whatever you do, just stay away from there. Interfere? What do you mean by that, dear? How mysterious. 
How mysterious! Oh man, I wanna I wanna know all the answers. I wanna figure out what's going on. What does Flora have invested in? Uh, maintaining the secret of the village and everything. Welcome back, Professor Layton. Please come in. Everyone is waiting. Thank you, Matthew. Is something troubling you, my good man? You seem ill at ease. Oh, I should also... I, I totally forgot about Simon's death. That was one of the very first things that was considered. Why did Simon die? Oh, no, I'm fine, sir. Please make your way to the parlor. All right, if you're certain that nothing is the matter, we'll head upstairs. Hmm, I don't know if I buy the whole nothing is the matter. Ah, uh, Mr. Layton, thank you for arriving so promptly. Come, have a seat. Why have you called us here, Inspector Chelmy? Like you, I'm not the kind of man who beats around the bush, so I'll just come out with it. I'm on to you, Layton. It's clear as day. You are responsible for Simon's death. Huh? <laughs> what? Are you suggesting I murdered Simon? Nonsense. <laughs> nice, Layton. I have to admire the way you keep cool under pressure, but of course, I would expect nothing less from a cold-blooded killer such as yourself. I don't suppose you've seen this before, eh? This face was on display in the room in which Simon was found dead. Okay, yeah, so I, what I was gonna say is, the only thing that I can really, I guess, um, reconcile this with, is that we had Giuseppe see us leave a vase behind where we had clearly never been before. Which makes me think that there's a model Layton in existence that's being used to frame, well, us, the real Layton. Anyways, this face was on display in the room in which Simon was found dead. All the forensic evidence I've gathered suggests that the killer struck Simon with this face. Our killer was no professional. You see, he left his fingerprints all over the murder weapon. Fingerprints that match your own, Mr. Layton. Huh. Oh, that's the vase from the market, isn't it? You rotten murderer. If this vase is evidence, why do you just break it like it was nothing? So go on and give me an alibi, Layton. Where were you when Simon was killed, eh? Come on, out with it. I was with Luke, investigating matters down in the village. Hmm, is that the best you can muster? It's clear that the little brat is an accomplice to your crime. I admit it, Layton. You two wanted to keep the golden apple so badly that you conspired to murder Simon. You can't fool me, Layton, so cough it up and start talking. While I'm at it, I'll take the key to the tower you picked up, too. It seems that you are intent on pinning this crime on me, Inspector. Interesting. How does the Inspector know that we picked up the key? But if you are a true enforcer of the law, you'll acknowledge that I'm not the only reasonable suspect. Any member of this household could have committed the crime. In fact, you can't even rule out the possibility that everyone here had, had, had a hand in the murder. Furthermore, are we even sure that a murder took place here? What kind of nonsense are you spouting now? Do you really think anyone here is fooled by your crackpot theories? Inspector Chelmy, I'm beginning to think the only person here with something to hide is you. That's absurd. This has nothing in the slightest to do with me. No, Inspector, it has quite a bit to do with you. Meaning? Isn't it obvious? Oh boy, he's about to throw some shade. If there is any criminal element involved in this case, then it is you, sir. What? That's absurd. Hey, calm down! <sighs> what utter rubbish! You'll need more than some death charge to save your hide. Yikes. Um, what's interesting is I can kind of see the facial resemblance between the hooded figure that looks kind of evil and Chelmy. Um, but regardless, I've heard you're quite the devoted husband, Inspector. I bet you take very good care of your wife, Amy. Luke and I found this article in the paper. Luke, what was Inspector Chelmy's favorite food again? Um, it was the fresh sweet potato fritters. This article specifically states you love sweet potato fritters, and yet you raged at poor Matthew when he brought you sweets with tea. Why? And your point is, it just so happens that I have a fondness for Amy's sweet potato fritters. Is that so? Thank you, Inspector. This little conversation has made things quite clear. Please take a look at this. Oh boy. I believe you just called them 
Amy's sweet potato fritters, yes? I'd like everyone to look at this article. As you can all see, the article clearly states that Inspector Chummy's wife is Emile, or Emily, not Amy. Do you mean to tell me you've forgotten your own wife's name? Ooh, called out! Out with it then, who are you and why have you been impersonating Inspector Chelmy? And why have you been running this investigation? But your sudden memory loss regarding your wife's name isn't the only suspicious thing about you. Try to recall the time around Simon's death. You said you received a report that prompted you to come to St. Mystere, but you forgot one thing. After Luke and I came to town, the drawbridge that is St. Mystere's sole entrance had its crank stolen. This effectively sealed the village. From that point on, no one could enter or leave the village. And do you recall just when this seclusion began? Oh man, um, it was... I think it was during our search for Claudia. Correct, the only route of the village had been closed well before Simon's death was discovered. After that event, there was no way that anyone outside the village could enter. By the same token, there was no way to take things out of the village, particularly something as large as a corpse. So tell me, Inspector Chummy, when did you actually first set foot in St. Mystere? And furthermore, what did you do with Simon's remains? Wow. <laughs> While we're on the subject, I have one more nagging question that I haven't been able to figure out. How is it that you knew about the key to the tower we discovered? Yeah, he had to have been there, and that would make him the our evil villain. When we happened upon that key, there wasn't a soul in the area, save for Luke and myself. Furthermore, I've spoken of what we found there to no one. There's no conceivable way you could have known about this key. Unless, of course, you were spying on us from the shadows when we picked it up. Now, let me see if I've got this all right. You pose as the inspector and use Simon's death as an excuse to enter Reinhold Manor. Since then, you've been waiting for the ideal time to strike and steal the golden apple from us. How am I doing so far? <laughs> <laughs> Awfully silent. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the, the true identity, the true form coming out. What's so funny? This is no laughing matter. I'm just I'm just astounded at how despicable I find you, Leighton. But that's exactly why you're worthy of being my arch enemy. Oh man. Transformation sequence. Wow. I've always despised you, Leighton. Don Paolo. Or Don Paolo. I thought I'd be able to crush you once and for all here in St. Mystere. But I will have to wait, since you saw through my disguise. You haven't caught on yet, but St. Mystere hides a secret of epic proportions. Wow. I don't know how all of that fit under one mask, but <laughs> nose, hair, etc. But nevertheless, here he is. When I imagine a dimwit like you try, trying to unravel the mystery, I just have to smile. My business here for the day has come to an end, so I'll be off now. But listen closely, Layton. Never forget how close you came to being bested. One day I, the great Don Paolo, will rain my vengeance down upon you. And on that fearful day, you will beg for an umbrella and a raincoat. Perhaps even some galoshes. <laughs> so, this is actually really funny. He's like talking about how... You know, Leighton's not that impressive, etc. But then he's also talking about how he has yet to, I guess, overcome or best Leighton. This person he's been intentionally putting down. It's kind of kind of ironic. Gosh. Yeah, what a character. Did he just jump out the window? Hmm. I guess he's gone. Do you know who that man was? Don Paolo is his name. I've heard stories of him. His grasp of the hard sciences was rumored to be unrivaled. Ooh. Ooh, the hard sciences, I'm down. The problem, as you might guess, was his personality. Though he was a genius, the man was evil. The science board banished him from working officially in his field ever again. Sneaking into St. Mysterio to steal the Reinhold fortune sounds like the kind of scheme he would hatch. He seems to hold quite a grudge against you, Professor. What did you do to cross him? I haven't the slightest idea, Luke. <laughs> I haven't the slightest idea, that's too funny. Hmm, well that aside, what was all that talk of a secret hidden in the village? What was he talking about? I'm mystified by it myself. For the time being, though, let's focus on finding the Golden Apple, shall we? I say we follow our newest lead and head for that tower. Let's check that dead end from before, Luke. 
Wow. Chapter 8, The Shadowy Intruder. Someone's been obstructing the investigation. Yeah, that, I mean, that's our, that's our person. So we've solved, oh, we finally solved one of the unsolved mysteries. Wow, that was, that was quite the reveal. That was really cool. Um, and I really like that they did that. I mean, obviously we noted the key because that was probably the most relevant. Um, I don't, I don't remember if we were actually exposed to the name difference between Amy and Emil, but the whole entering the, and leaving the city was totally available to the player since, you know, the very first moment we met Inspector Chelmy. I really like when the game ties together different clues, um, that are subtle throughout the game that have been available for the player to work with, to do the logic, to get that deduction before the game tells you, um, before obviously, well, actually telling you. Um, I think, I feel like that's a really good design, um, a design choice for a puzzle game, or a mystery game even. But anyways, I'm simply shocked, shocked at this turn of events. Who could have guessed that we had an imposter in our midst? He had me completely fooled. But you saw right through him, Professor. I must say I'm quite impressed with your cunning. I ask you now to put that brilliant mind of yours to work again and set out in search of the golden apple. It would be my pleasure, madam. By the way, are you feeling all right? You look a bit pale. Hmm. I awoke this morning with memories of a peculiar dream I must have had last night. In it, my husband and I had just had a brand new baby girl, and oh, how everyone fawned over her. The next moment, suddenly I was in a park, walking hand in hand with my young daughter. With your daughter, you say? Now why would I have a silly dream like that? These past few days have really been quite draining. What's interesting is, from earlier conversations, Dahlia said that Flora is not her daughter, but instead the first wife, Violet's daughter. So I think there's an inherent connection between Violet and Dahlia and how they've been built or how they've been programmed, per se, um, that will connect their memories. And that's what's, I guess, coming through in this dream. Hmm. Professor Layton, I don't feel particularly well at the moment. I think I'll go lie down for a moment. What's wrong with Lady Dahlia? She says she had a dream of walking the park with her young daughter. There's something quite curious about that dream. Yeah, she should not be referring to her as her daughter. Interesting. Would you please let me know of any eligible bachelorettes? <laughs> Like, I don't care about the whole imposter thing, Inspector Chelmy. Simon's dead, has been dead, it's mystery, unsolved, but you know, any any hot singles in the area? <laughs> um, can we go in Lady Dahlia's room? We can. Anything of note in here? Are we gonna keep bothering her while she's in here? I'd like to be left alone for a little while. I need some time to collect my thoughts. Fair enough. Um, what is kind of worthwhile is that these curtains remind me of the painting that we just finished up. Alright, well, we'll head on out. We haven't been able to enter that room in quite some time, so it was nice to at least check that. We'll keep on heading out. The music of the village is rather wonderful. We'll see if Raymond has anything more for us. Lady Dahlia's requests, yada yada yada. Again, I think our last 16 puzzles are going to be, you know, towards the end of the game in the tower. We'll check everything along the way, but, um, but still, I, I'm not expecting to find too much. So let's, let's actually just start heading this way, see if she has any more puzzles for us. Adria's really nice, but she comes up with some really tough puzzles, of course, of course. Is there anyone in the cafe? No? Okay, was that really just a one-time thing? <laughs> Certainly seems like it. Let's go chat over here. I know Gerard had mentioned having more puzzles for us, so let's see if he does now. Sarsini. Oh, not right now. Okay. Um, I interpreted that right now as meaning he would have some more in maybe future chapters, but it's been a couple chapters now that he hasn't had any, so... Got it all figured out. Okay, this is the same as uh, he had said in the past, so I think that... We've exhausted their puzzles. <laughs> so now we'll go over this way and see if Giuseppe has anything to say for us. Same with Agnes. Or are we gonna get another veal deal pun? Sure I can't interest you in a nice cut of veal. Yep, yep. There's the pun. There it is. Agnes, you got anything for us? All out of puzzles. Wow. Okay. I really think we're getting close to the end, guys. Like, really close. Anything else? Doesn't seem like it. 
Do you have more puzzles? She alluded. I mean, we've only had one puzzle from her. I've got a new puzzle for you, dearie. I bet you're just dying to see it, aren't you? I'm sorry, madam, but right now we're in a terrible rush. Hmm. You can't fool this old gal. I've seen you strolling around solving other people's puzzles, and now it's my turn. Seen us? What do you mean? Have you have you been following us? Okay, so we're actually solving a puzzle now. We haven't solved any puzzles up until this point in this episode. It's kind of funny. All right. So when you roll a die, the chance of rolling a three are one in six. The chance of rolling a three twice in a row are one in thirty-six, and three in a row is one in two hundred sixteen. Let's assume you roll a die three times and get a three each time. Your chances of rolling a three on your next roll are one in how many? Oh, six. Um, this is just the fact that no dice roll is dependent on the previous dice roll, so. Rolling a three on your next roll are one in how many? Um, yeah, it's one in six. It's just, I think it's like the law of independent events answer. or something like that. Critical thinking is the key to success. Three, three, seven, seven. Again, a pretty cool number. Um, doesn't matter how many times you roll each time. Oh, and this is also kind of like a gambler's fallacy, where it's like, oh, I've been losing, so I'm bound to win sometime soon. Um, you know, your future games aren't necessarily dependent. I mean, depending on some card games, based on which cards have already been played, etc., um, they are somewhat, you know, related. Uh, but I would think of most probability events as independent uh, most of the time. Anyways, you're going to the tower, are you, dearie? How about I show you the way? Oh, I was under the impression that the villagers of St. Mysterio hated going near that tower. <laughs> oh, yes, I don't want to go anywhere near that place myself. Though I suppose I could make an exception for a strapping man such as yourself. Oh, yes. <laughs> Is she hitting on him? Uh, Professor, we should really keep moving. Alright. So we've obtained another uh, another puzzle, which is nice. Does she have any more for us? I'd imagine she has more than a couple puzzles. So you want some company to go with you to the tower? Some feminine company? <laughs> no thank you, I think we're just fine as is. Alright, well, I guess if there is another puzzle she has to offer, which there probably is, it's not going to be offered right now. It's a dead end, no two ways about it. Maybe there's another pathway to the tower hidden around here. I'd argue we've come to exactly the right spot, Luke. What do you mean by that? We just need to look for the keyhole. Look right here, Luke. There's a small indentation in the wall where one could place a small object. Oh, so this must be... Yes, this curious indentation is no doubt the spot indicated in Baron Reinhold's note to Archibald. I'm willing to wager that if we put this in there and give it a turn... Oh my. Well, that's rather impressive. <laughs> the house just straight up, like, tore apart. Wow. Just as I suspected. Alright, Luke. In we go. Oh man, we're heading into the tower. This is it gonna be the start? Yep. New chapter. Chapter 9. The Tower's Secret. A path to the tower has been found. Scale the tower and solve all the mysteries of St. Mystere. I think this is it. I think this is our final chapter, guys. We may be closing in on solving all of the mysteries. Oh, we missed one. Puzzles, puzzle 55, the odd sandwich. Oh, darn it, we finally missed one. <laughs> all right, well, we'll, we'll have to go back and, and see that. Um, where would that have been, the odd sandwich? Would it have been in the restaurant? Would it have would it been in one of like croutons or would it be a hidden puzzle somewhere in the restaurant? Either way, um, just me being the completionist I am. Actually, let's chat with her and see if she has a new puzzle for us, given we've officially moved into the new chapter. Doesn't seem so, given it's the same dialogue as before. But it is also reassuring, then, to see that um, one of the puzzles went to Granny Riddleton, meaning the last few times we completed a chapter and we didn't get such a screen, uh, we then have the confirmation that, well, we didn't miss any of the puzzles from that chapter. Alright, so let's take a look at the odd sandwich. What do we have going on here? It's worth 20 pick rats. Okay, it's been a while since we've had a, like, 20, 10, etc. level pick rat. You, or a level puzzle. Uh, using scraps left over from your breakfast, you've managed to cobble together a rather oddly shaped sandwich. How many times must you cut the sandwich in order to make it fit neatly in the container? Um, I think it's just once. I think if you cut the sandwich like this, you can then rearrange the, the triangles accordingly. 
because you can take this part here and then kind of rotate it like that. Although if that were the case, then I mean it, it would fit already. Um, I think the idea is that we're supposed to make it into a rectangle more so than cut it down to an appropriate size. So how many times do we have to cut it? Um, let's see here. It's tough to see why it doesn't already fit, admittedly. <laughs> it only looks a little bit bigger. Hmm. Because I wish I could, like, more closely look at where is it overlapping, right? If, I wish it would show kind of like a rectangle where it's like, oh, this is the part that's left over. This is the part you need to rearrange. I'd imagine it's probably something like this. I mean, when you look at it like that, right? This piece on the end here, this right triangle can go around like that. And then this triangle here, which is actually also a right triangle, this bigger triangle can fit in there. So theoretically, well, would that be one cut? No. Um, you would still need to cut it twice, but I think that's the idea, is that you'll cut off one of these corners here to bring it over to this corner here, and then you'll cut off this part here to kind of slide it in there. And that way you'll end up with a clean rectangle. And so then you'll need two cuts. Granted, they could be, you know, on the same plane, or the same line, uh, but they would technically be two cuts. So let's give that a go. I feel pretty good about that. Again, I'm not sure how let's much would it. need to be cut, but I'm pretty sure those are the right shapes. Oh, so that's not correct. Oh, how embarrassing. There's an easy way to make the sandwich fit into the container. I mean, I believe it. <laughs> Okay, um, does it just fit as is? Is it zero? Again, I don't really know. Because I don't, I don't know, like, Again, I wish I could I could see an outline of how big the the box itself is. But I thought that was pretty on point, kind of making a cut like that. I don't know if they define a cut as like a knife movement in one direction because you could technically move through one end of the bread and then there'll be some empty space and then another end of the bread. Would that count as two cuts or one cut? Right? If we were to like draw the line we just did. Would that count as one cut or two cuts? My impression was that it'd be two cuts. But I think this is what you'd want to do. Um, is there something else? The other thing is, you know, are we able to stack the sandwich? <laughs> Probably not. So the only other thing I can think of is if maybe... So we have this shape here, right? What if we were to cut the part of the bread so that we can recreate such a shape? Where it's like... Hmm... Nah, that, that wouldn't work too well. Um, I'm trying to basically say, how can we create a rectangle from this? Would it form a rectangle if I were to cut it, like, here? I think it would. If you then take the piece on the bottom and rotate it into this spot, 
I think it would actually fit to make a rectangle. So I think it would be one. Let's give that a go. I think that would work. There we go. All right. Critical thinking is the key to success. So I just did not see that at first. Yep, there it is. That's pretty cool. Um, all right, so simple chair. We'll give it to Luke for now. We probably gain something from optimizing the happiness of each of the characters with their rooms, but at the same time, I'm not really, not really seeing it how it's working. We gave Luke the chair. Their happiness hasn't really changed much, right? Oh, I rather like this chair, so that's definitely Luke's. Yeah, I mean, we still have quite a few items to obtain, right? One, two, three, and then I think it was eight on the other side, so eleven. And we presumably have around fifteen more uh, puzzles to solve. But regardless, I'm glad we were able to solve that. Uh, it was... My first impression was not the, the correct way to go about it, but that's... That's okay. I'm excited to finally get inside the tower. And I hope you guys are too. Not gonna end things off just yet. Don't get, uh, don't get too nervous. <laughs> you can look and see how this appeared, what appeared to be a house was actually truly just phony. It's an empty house. I'd imagine there'll be some intense puzzle guarding the door here. Really? No coin? Okay, there we go. I mean, at this point, I think we have enough hint coins that we literally couldn't use them all with the remaining number of puzzles left, but hey, doesn't hurt, I guess, right? <laughs> but yeah, I'd, I'd be surprised if this door just opened. Hmm. Yep, it looks like you've solved at least 75 puzzles. All right, then, go in that tower, or go, in, go on in the tower. Okay, so that's a little bit reassuring, right? The story check is like, you need to have solved at least 75, and we're at 106, so I think we're doing a pretty comprehensive job of solving puzzles. This place gives me the creeps. In the words of, uh, Luigi, hello? <laughs> Plus, it's all murky in here, and I can't see a thing. Hmm? Oh my, what was that? Ah! Uh, are they sinking? Did they fall in a trap of some sort? What happened? It seems they've fallen. Oh, my head. Luke, are you alright, my boy? No injuries, I hope. Don't worry, Professor. I'm fine. And yourself? Nothing a good long bath later won't solve. But more importantly, where are we? This room is stuffed to the gills with curious machines. I've never seen anything like them. What do you suppose they do? And look at all the gears around. What in the world? Look, look over there on the wall, Professor. My word. There are views from all over town displayed here. Don't they almost look like... Blueprints? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's for each and every um, citizen. Like, the key to access them is like a robot, per se, right? And what's this? Almost every villager's name is on this wall. Professor, what if somebody is using this place to keep an eye on what's going on in St. Mysterio? Hmm... Look, there's stairs over there. Let's get out of here. This place gives me goosebumps. And then, obviously, you can see Simon's key is missing, and uh, his portrait is blacked out. Yes, you're quite right, Luke. Let's head out. Wow, what a place. Um, this looks like it's relevant. Can we interact with this? What is it? What's this notebook? Did you find something interesting? I mean, it looks like it. I think so. This notebook looks like someone's been using it as a diary. Just a little longer now. Soon this village will complete the task it was designed for. I've waited so long for this day, but as it comes closer, I feel a little lonely. I hope that at the very least, the young mistress finally finds happiness at the end of all this. Was it done so that a village could be made to help Flora? This poor journal looks like it's been through a lot. All the pages are terribly frayed. I bet all the scraps of paper we found in the village came from here. Okay, well that's good to know. Um, there are a whole bunch of machines and parts and everything. And again, it fits that picture of the guy who was, who we saw abducting Raymond, right? He had a whole bunch of 
tools in his hat and they were jumbling around everywhere. Is there really nothing else to, to work with in terms of puzzles in this room? I guess not. I'm truly surprised though. Oh my! Well, there's our, there's our person. What's this? You. Bruno, okay. You two again. What are you doing here? What are you up to? Just a moment, sir. What are you talking about? I knew it. You came here to steal my secrets, didn't you? Didn't you? Don't play dumb with me. I see right through you. Don't think I haven't been watching. I've seen you two sniffing about every nook and cranny in town, getting in the way of my work. Now I've had it, so unless you want trouble, give me back number 38. Number 38. I bet he's referring to Simon. Please calm yourself, sir. Just listen to what we have to say for a moment. We haven't intended to get in the way of your work. We are merely searching for the golden apple. Neither of us knows anything about this number 38 business. Oh! Did you just say the golden apple? You're really here looking for the golden apple then? Precisely. Do you know anything that could be of help to us? Hmm, so that's how it is, eh? What you're looking for is on the top floor of the tower. But watch out, because the puzzles in this tower are harder than a whole mess of diamond-tipped drills. I know they call you a puzzle master, but are you sure you have what it takes to solve them? Now, why would you go and tell us something like that? I bet you just want to set us up to walk right into some sort of trap. Hmm, what would I possibly gain from doing something like that? Not to mention, it's my duty to guide those who seek the golden apple toward their goal. Interesting. It's his job to do so. Is he one of... He's got to be the old friend of Baron. Um, or at least one of them. He was at least given this mission before the Baron passed away. What's also interesting is if it's his duty to guide those who seek the golden apple toward the goal, it means that nobody else in the village has made an attempt to seek the golden apple. Which further supports the now obvious pretense that they're, they're robots, <laughs> they're machines. Some mischief maker snuck into the village and had me all confused, but I think I've figured things out now. Seeing as how it's your duty and all, would you mind filling us in? What is St. Mysterio's big secret? Alright. The name is Bruno. I work for the Reinhold family. For some time now, I've managed St. Mysterio from up here in the tower. Managed St. Mysterio? You're the one who manages the life of each of the villagers, aren't you? What in the world are you two talking about? Surely you must have seen them too, Luke. Do you recall the cogs we found about the village and the list of names we saw in that room? All the villagers in St. Mysterio are robots created by Bruno. What do you mean the villagers are all robots? In other words, the inhabitants of St. Mysterio aren't human, but intricately constructed machines. They're robots, my boy. I have to say, I'm astonished that anyone could build such elaborate machines in this day and age. You must be quite the engineer, sir. Oh, aren't you a sharp one? I never imagined you'd figure out so much of the mystery by yourself. What do you mean, sir? <laughs> St. Mysterio isn't a real town, Luke. It was constructed by Bruno and the late Baron. How am I doing so far, Bruno? <laughs> um, you're right on the money. Master believed that one day an heir worthy of his fortune would come forward. He had me build the city and all who dwell within it to prepare for that day. Then he hid his greatest treasure, the golden apple, away in the top floor of this tower. I was ordered to protect it with my life. Until the person arrives who can solve the puzzle of the golden apple, I will continue to protect it. Remarkable. I'm impressed at how far Baron Reinhold went to protect his treasure. Wow, so literally the entirety of the village was built to protect it. It's not just any treasure, mind you. The golden apple was the Baron's most precious treasure. But why go through all this just to hide treasure? Why build an entire village to protect it? Oh, whoops. Seems I've been a little loose-lipped here. I've already said more than I should have. The answers you're looking for are waiting for you at the top of the tower. Go on then, show me if you're the one who can solve the puzzle of the golden apple. Oh man, I'm excited! I'm excited! Wow, so the tiny cogs, the abductions, it's all, it's all coming together. This is, this is unbelievable. Actually, I mean, it's very believable. We've been, you know, under the impression that the villagers are, are robots for quite some time now. But it's pretty cool to see that, okay, we have the tower, and that's what we're going to be climbing, and the puzzles are going to be significantly more difficult. And, uh, and yeah, it's, it's quite exciting. I wonder if there are still going to be puzzles hidden throughout here, or if there are going to be puzzles that are obstructing our path, keeping us from climbing. Professor, look, the stairs are barred off. Aha, uh -huh, this must be one of the puzzles Bruno warned us about. It does look quite difficult. 
This is perfect timing, my boy. I'm in the mood for a puzzle with some meat to it. All right, here we go. Get the ball out, number four. 70 Picarats! 70! Wow, okay, so this perplexing door has a device on it that contains a small red ball. Okay, um, the, the smaller, or the most efficient route is with 21 moves. So let's see, what do we want to do here? We can only start with one of two moves, right? Um, and again, noting the symmetry here is, is interesting. How are we going to want to move things? Well, I think one of the first things we're going to want to do... We can move that like this. We can do that, move this down here. Now, how else do we want to move things is the question. I can move this up here like that. So that I can start to move these over and, and bring this ball into the, the play area. Something interesting is for any piece that is that is not a square piece, we always assume it moves in the way of its longest direction. However, we, what we can actually do is this. <laughs> we can actually move those pieces like that. So let's try doing that and promptly get stuck again <laughs> because we haven't made any progress. Um, or I mean, at this point, we're not gonna be able to do anything. Yeah, we actually can't make another move. However, I feel like we still made quite a bit of progress. The question is, what do we need to do differently? I'll need to move this over again, should I want to bring this down here. Hmm. Do I bring both of these down, like this, or, or bring that up? Is this maybe the, the start that I need? Hmm. This is proving kind of difficult itself, because I could shift the yellow block to the left, but that's not going to open up a whole lot. Or is it? Actually, again, what I was saying before about us assuming the blocks move in the direction of their longest side, we can slide the blue, bo the blue block down now. And then we can shift this over. Although, now we can't really do much. <laughs> Now, I don't think we have any moves that lead to anything, that is. Because, I mean, obviously, we can. We, the only, there's only one purple block we can move from this position. Hmm. But that's certainly interesting. Let's move this back and just and play around for a moment. Is there a way for me to lower the yellow block at all? What if I were to do something like this? No, even then, I'm not able to do so. So we're, we'll restart. But I feel like we're getting pretty close. I feel like we're onto it. Hmm. It is a 70 pick rat puzzle, and I can tell you, it, it feels like it already. <laughs> it definitely already feels like it. Um, let's see here. How do we want to do this? to do this we could try a more basic route I guess where we start to bring things down like this but again I don't think that's gonna be too useful because then we kind of get stuck here right I think we need to we need to clear some bigger routes I think something we're gonna want to do is see if we can place a, a purple block where the ball currently is. I think that would be immensely helpful. And I think we're going to want to preserve that top right space for now, actually. 
we can do something like this. And that way we're actually able to move the ball to the left. Is that what I want to do right now, though? It has to be. <laughs> because moving the purple blocks doesn't actually solve anything. Moving the blue block isn't going to do anything right now. So I have to move this this over in this path. Um, but again, moving those, those blocks over won't do anything either. Um, what I can do is move this this way and then kind of store this ball up there. I think that is going to be a uh, move in the right direction. Then we can sh shift this over and then, and then what? I feel like we're actually quite close. Yeah, what I'm gonna wanna do now is bring the ball over, and then I can bring this purple block up, then this up. Oh man, we are so close. We are so close. <laughs> um, how do I want to move these blocks though? I move this purple block here, the ball here, this over, then this up, this over, this over, and then down. So we had three extra moves, go. but we still got it. I'd be curious what my three extra moves were. Critical um, thinking maybe I'll look back at it another time. But for the time being, I'm pretty happy with that. Wow, if you had to move the ball lots of times to reach the goal, don't worry. Figure out how to get the goal in the fewest moves possible is an interesting puzzle in itself. Yeah, I agree. Um, we were pretty close, but not quite. There we are. Come on, Luke. We must press on. All right, lead the way, Professor. Lovely. Say, Professor, there's something that's been on my mind for a while. Oh, what is it, Luke? When the crank for the bridge was stolen, we were sealed in the village along with Don Paolo. It could be just me, but I feel like this wasn't just a coincidence. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Um, and the question is, obviously Don Paolo himself didn't do that. Or I don't think he did that, because if he did that, he set himself up to be, you know, discovered. Somebody planned it, but who? Ha ha ha, well, Luke, I don't have any direct evidence of it, but I'd wager that it was Bruno's doing. Bruno? But why in the world would Bruno do something like that? Do you remember what he said? It's his duty to show the way to those who seek the golden apple. Although I guess what's interesting is, did Lady Dahlia call us in? Did Lady Dahlia call us in to solve the mystery of the golden apple? Why? It... Hmm. Yeah, why were we called here in the first place? But naturally, Bruno had no idea what kind of people would come to St. Mysterious seeking that treasure. It's likely he trapped us in the village to buy himself some time to evaluate who we were. He wanted to see if we were worthy of the secret. That's terribly presumptuous of him, don't you think? How could he think either of us were bad people? He doesn't even know us! Well, that's exactly it. <laughs> Who knows how Bruno saw it, Luke? I'm certain he was just being careful. After all, Don Paolo managed to sneak in with us. Bruno probably had his hands full and needed time to see what kind of people had entered the village. Oh, that reminds me, I wanted to ask about that too. Luke, we really should get started here. You can ask me your next question while we're climbing. Okay. So now we've solved the, the mystery of the crank. Have we? It was probably Bruno, I guess. Um, okay, so we've solved that puzzle. We can head back down if we wanted to, or we could head out. Um, Robopupper is showing us that there's probably a coin in the vicinity here. So that's always lovely. I don't think there are any other hidden puzzles though, but we've cleared tower floor one and can head up to two. But of course, we're gonna be doing that in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. We didn't solve too many puzzles, but the puzzles we did solve were pretty neat. And we're getting to some of the tougher ones. And I'm very excited for the you know increase in challenge. I also, uh, appreciate that this episode we had quite a bit of story development. The whole confrontation with Inspector Chelmy, and then of course finally getting to meet Bruno, and obviously we're getting very close to the end. I'm, I'm very excited to see how everything unfolds. Of course, we are solving some of the mysteries, but I am curious as to why Leighton was called here in the first place, right? Um, because I believe Lady Dal we were told Lady Dahlia called us, but if Lady Dahlia is one of those robots herself, um, was it the Baron's intentions to just call all of the world's best puzzle solvers and see if they can do it and then reward somebody accordingly? And maybe this whole village in its entirety is just a manifestation of the Baron's passion for puzzles himself? Who fashioned the puzzles that we're trying to solve, right? Um, that sort of thing. I I'm curious about that, and I imagine we'll start to get answers, of course, as we continue to climb. But, until the next episode, 
is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.